Hey, couple of newsworthy items from All Things AI that came out last week. One from OpenAI, another from Google. And I'm also going to cover another item that actually was released late last year, but it's from a company that I believe is sneaking up on both OpenAI and Google in terms of generative AI. So let's get going. So what we heard from OpenAI last, late last week was that uh, there are a few things, but the ones that I'm going to highlight are that they have two new embedding models, that they have made an update to their GPT-4 Turbo preview model, and uh, and they have updated updated their GPT-3.5 Turbo uh, model. So embeddings, uh, first of all, hey, embeddings are the bread and butter of natural language processing, and they are the bread and butter of chat GPT as well. So here, what they uh, talked about was that they have uh, they have released uh, their new embedding model. It's called Text Embedding Three. Uh, it comes in two flavors, small and large. Their current de facto embedding model that we all use is uh, uh, embedding uh, Ada Two, and so now they're, they're offering uh, uh, embedding Three model. Uh, comes in small and large flavor. What's uh, not noteworthy is that. Uh, the, even the small model is much more powerful than the powerful than their current ADA2 model, and uh, obviously the large is definitely much more powerful than their current ADA2 model. And at the same time, uh, this small uh, text embed their, their small model uh, is not only powerful, more powerful, but it's also cheaper, uh, five times cheaper. So it's good news for those of us who who use uh, uh, embeddings from OpenAI for various different tasks uh, you know, such as uh, they talked about here um, retriever augmented generation um, and uh, many other natural language processing tasks and then um, in terms of their 3.5 turbo model the big news that I take away is that um, that they have lowered their price by 50% for input tokens and by 25% uh, for output tokens uh, their GPT-4 Turbo uh, preview model has been uh, 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 updated, and and then the main uh, one of the things that I actually took away that I uh, thought was uh, interesting and actually I'm looking forward to is that they're going to launch GPT-4 Turbo with Vision in general availability in coming months. So looking forward to that. The other newsworthy item was from Google, Google Research. Uh, they uh, they talked about Lumiere, and uh, and basically Lumiere is a text to video model. And so let me take a, uh, take a minute here to unpack uh, Lumiere for us here. So it's a text to video generation uh, using a new diffusion model called uh, SpaceTime uh, UNet architecture, and uh, this essentially allows Lumiere to create the video in one process instead of putting smaller still frames together, which then results in a much more realistic and coherent uh, output, a coherent motion output. Uh, Lumiere can generate uh, text to video, image to video, uh, st stylized stylized generation, etc. So look, sometimes it's just best to check out what this looks like uh, what this looks like and sounds like uh, in this case but uh, let's check out a clip that they put together on YouTube uh, we'll just play a few seconds so we'll get a flavor for what Lumiere can do All right, you get the gist. Um, uh, basically, you know, it's creating the short clips based on uh, either text or image uh, input. So text to video, right? And still a holy grail in, in the field of generative AI. Uh, I think it's getting better and better and, and certainly Lumiere's um, 
showing where it's headed. I think it's uh, you know getting getting to a better place in terms of uh, generating video based on text prompt or image. So here, uh, and I'll leave a link for everything that I'm showing you here in the video as always, so you can check it out for yourself. Uh, so here, there's some examples. If I hover over this, it, you can read, it, it gives you the text prompt that was used, okay? Um, in this case, astronaut on planet Mars making a detour around his base, etc. And there's plenty of uh, examples that they give you. Um, and then the uh, image to video is something else it can do. So you provide an image and you get a video in return. Uh, same thing as before, you know, you can hover around uh, over it. It tells you what the prompt was. All right. Um, actually looks pretty good. I think there's one in here. Let me see if I can find it. This guy. I think it's really slick. I mean, I, I'm not an expert on uh, turtles or how they actually swim, but uh, it looks very real, realistic. Uh, you can also also do stylized uh, generation and um, video stylization you know, with Lumiere off-the-shelf text-based image editing methods can be used for consistent video editing. So we provide some source video and then, you know, uh, edit that by making it your source video, in this case, car, this car, make it look like that. All right. Uh, this I found, uh, personally, <laughs> I like this one here, uh, where the Lumiere model is able to animate the content of an image within a specific user-provided region. I, uh, so I, I'm taking it that I would upload this image here I would mask it or highlight this little area and it would only animate that. So that's pretty cool. And uh, video in painting as well. So there you go. That's uh, Lumiere from Google. And I really think this is uh, a great, great uh, improvement or some of the things that I've seen and played around with. So looking forward to when this is generally available. Last thing I wanted to cover was something that was released late last year, but I want to bring it up here. Uh, it's from Apple uh, and their multimodal language model called Ferret that they um, open sourced, released last year, open sourced it on GitHub. Very similar to what they did with their uh, machine learning uh, platform MLX, which they open sourced as well um, in November of last year as well. Something new for Apple, in my opinion, um, open sourcing their, their great work. And so I, I really like that. So basically, again, I'll, I'll unpack this uh, a little bit more for you guys as well by showing you an example of uh, you know what this does. And it, this is really being uh, talked about a lot in, in the circles of Gen AI. And uh, I'm going to leave a link for uh, to all of these things, including the paper that they released. Uh, so if you're interested in you know deep diving into it, you can do that. So uh, Fer uh, so Apple's Ferret is a uh, open source uh, model from Apple. It's a multimodal language model, uh, which they developed in collaboration with uh, Cornell University, and uh, you know Ferret basically bridges vision and language. And I will sh show you a concrete example of like what that means, in my opinion. Uh, but you know, I'm going to make some points here about Apple. Uh, so, uh, Behemoth, Apple, I, I say, has entered the generative AI game here. And um, I, and I, I, I'm telling you, it's, they're, they're going to sneak up. I mean, I, I really look forward to bigger and better things uh, um, from Apple in terms of Gen AI. Rumor has it that, that, has it that Apple will have some kind of Gen AI features available um, on their phones and tablets uh, late 2024. So, one of the things I want to tell you is that Apple, uh, it appears to me, it wants AI to run on its hardware versus uh, on the cloud. So their MLX uh, platform that they uh, open source on GitHub, even this, um, you know, when you, if you check this out, you'll see that, you know, you can download this models on your computer and train them, evaluate them, but they're meant to basically, you know, using this um, models, um, you know, building, they're hoping building apps that can be deployed on their hardware. So I really think they want AI to run on their hardware and not, and not on the cloud. So coming back to Ferret, the best way I can uh, showcase for you, uh, and this is in their paper, 
the power of ferret. Here you go. This example really brings the point home. So I would upload this image of a motorcycle. And there are many good models out there. If I could upload this picture and say, what is this image about? It would come back and say, it's a motorcycle. Might even, you know, say the color. You know, maybe some of them even can pick out what uh, model, etc., like what brand name. But in this case, it's like, okay, not only can you load this up with ferret, load the image, but I can then highlight a certain section here. And then I can prompt, what is the purpose of that highlighted section? What is the purpose of that, uh, that highlighted part? On the bike so what is the purpose of that so here's the ground truth for the paper and so then they uh, evaluated their ferret model against uh, three others and uh, ferrets response was the closest thing to the ground truth they actually it's pretty much on point um, so I think it's it, it's a great improvement and you know when I say uh, it's uh, you know it, it's 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 uh it bridges it bridges um, you know vision and language right so not only does it have to understand its motorcycle but it has to specifically understand what is this I need to explain that part so it has to have an understanding of essentially it needs to know like every part of the bike right uh, or a human would be required to know you know that that's a shock absorber and that's a you know it's a wheel whatever so hey I'm looking forward to you know, things coming from Apple in the future as well. Uh, Definitely excited about Lumiere here as well. And uh, hey, that's the end of the video. Hope you found this helpful and, uh, and, and you find this newsworthy as well. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to my channel. Until next time.